the match. Well, a triumph for Sri Lanka, 491 for 7 and 294 for 7. England, 370, the match drawn. Well, a tremendous performance, that, from the Sri Lankans and particularly from their captain, Dulip Mendes. I reckon he'd be a very, very happy man at the way things have turned out, and everyone back in Sri Lanka can also be very happy. He and David Gower talked with Peter West at the end of the match. You must be very proud of uh, the good cricket played here by your side. Yes, certainly. I'm very proud of my side, and they performed really well. We never expected this to happen, but I think they performed very well. David, what would you like to say about the Sri Lankan performance? Well, they've honestly done themselves proud, as you say. They've, they've come across not expecting to win, not being expected to win by anyone in this country, really, and they've proved that they can play some very good cricket. We found we had a very good pitch there, which uh, unfortunately I gave them first use of. And right, they took well, full advantage. You had uh, 11 players only, no flexibility on the morning of the match. Four seamers and one spinner. Humid morning. It seemed natural, no doubt, to put them in first. Well, it wasn't totally natural. It wasn't that easy. That easy decision to make. It was obviously under the assumption that the ball would swing a bit and it didn't so it would rather fell flat I'm afraid. Julie one last word I'd like to keep David for one extra word you must feel that you've made your point and the next time you come back for a short tour you're going to get three test matches. Yeah I think that's tremendous because three test matches will do a lot of good for Ceylon cricket. You've done a lot of good already here thanks very Thank much very indeed. Much. Glad to go and celebrate with your boys. David can Thanks a lot, Julie. Yeah. David, can I have an extra word with you? Mm. You've had quite a year, haven't you? I mean, you were captain in Pakistan, you took on the captaincy, you made two big hundreds, everything went well, then you got uh, food poisoning, was it? The blood poisoning. Blood poisoning, yes. Blood poisoning. It wasn't, it wasn't the best. Fire and brimstone. A lot of people had this sympathy with you during the West Indies test. And the last thing you wanted to happen here was to be on the wrong end of this. Well, yes. Uh, I said just now, we were expected to win this. We were expected to certainly have the upper hand. And in that respect, I suppose we let ourselves down, we've let the public down who were expecting that. It's been one of those summers. I mean, it's the understatement of all time. How do you react to the fierce criticism that you and the England team have had in the media, particularly for the batting performance on Saturday, when it was suggested uh, in one paper that uh, your fee of £1,500 might be withheld with justice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we tend to ignore things like that. It's obviously when things don't go well. Um, the obvious thing is to criticise or complain a bit. It's, hopefully it's constructive. And uh, you obviously don't expect to get praised for doing things not very well. I suppose Saturday was disappointing as much for us as for the people watching. Mainly because two players that were in there weren't really finding their touch. When things happen like that, it is unfortunate and it's, uh, it doesn't reflect well on anyone. But simply when people are out of touch like that, it makes it very hard to, to push it along. What about the out cricket? You, how do you react again to criticism that you're a bit too laid back and casual <laughs> and, and, well, and, you, Peter, and that you let things drift? Peter, I've had that criticism ever since I started playing first class cricket. And previously it's been applied only to my batting. Now that it's been applied to captaincy as well, all I can say is the same thing. Namely that what goes on inside my head is obviously far more than people appreciate. And uh, we all have our own styles, our own ways of life. I think it'd be uh, possibly a mistake or it would be acting if I change now. And just how difficult is Ian Botham to captain? There are again suggestions you can't get him <laughs> off when he's bowling and that he tends to run the ship. Now, what no, do you well, want to say about Again, that? it's very easy to try and make these statements for sitting 100 yards away. And I've got a lot of time for Ian, especially when he's bowling well and batting well. He's an interesting man to captain, as much as he can be doing so well one moment and then he perhaps lets you down a bit. He still bowls a few half volleys or something which make it look a lot worse. But I've been basically happy the way it's gone. Uh, I've taken him off when I wanted to take him off. There have been times when he said no, but I've had to. And times when he said yes, I'll carry on, and I haven't minded at all. Well, I think you're due for a change of fortune in India this winter. Well, we always we say the wheel well. of fortune keeps moving, so as long as it keeps moving up now for the winter, I'll be happy. You've got to be an optimist at this game, haven't you? <laughs> yes, it's sometimes, it's sometimes a bit of a strain, but we keep trying. Well, there's no doubt David uh, Gower deserves a little bit of good fortune. That wheel might be going to turn his way in India and then down in Australia in early 1985.